Thank you, Mr. Zelaniak. Thank you, Mr. Klimov. Uh, we met already in Rome uh, time ago. It's a would be great, great pleasure that I accepted the invitation to participate in the Congress of the United Russia Party. And I'm really proud to be here today as a representative of the Five Star Movement, a political reality that has become already a true miracle in Europe and maybe worldwide. Let me give you some data. Starting in 2009, based on uh, Beppe Grillo and Roberto Casaleggio's initiative, uh, innovative view, during the 2013 general election, the Five Star Movement reached 25%, making it the second most voted Italian uh, list after the first one in terms of votes. For three years since then, we have grown exponentially, and a week ago we won the administrative election in Turin and in Rome, two of the five most important cities in Italy, demonstrating in the political way that we have gained in our country. Our way on winning the general election is very short. The first time movement is based on simple but revolutionary things. We, have, we are leaderless, we, uh, we don't have any decision-making pyramids, we refute any, refuse any kind of uh, public uh, funding, and we only use crowdfunding for our political activities. We are based on internet, and any kind of proposal that we make is coming from an internet-based application. We are neither left or right, we evaluate ideas as wrong or right. In foreign affairs, it means a very simple thing. We are neither pro-Russians or pro-Americans. We are pro-Italians. We don't have lobbyists or financial corporations supporting us. We reject any public funding, as I said. And this allows us to be complete independent on defending national strategic interests and act for what we believe is the best option for Italian people. As uh, the group leader of the Five Star Movement in the Foreign Affairs Commission, I would like to tell you a few things that we had done for the relationship with Russia in the last three years. Um, suddenly, when the Ukraine, Ukraine Craig crisis spread, we understood that something was not going on on the right, on the right way. And we, uh, despite the disinformation that was done also in Italy, we perceived it as a consequence of external interferences caused by the EU and the United States. Today, few can deny that in Kiev there has been a coup with a specific aim to bring NATO closer to Russia's border and to facilitate the approval of the TTIP. This was followed by the sanction to Russia, but it wasn't a free choice of Europe, as admitted by Joe Biden, Vice President of the United States. The Italian government has accepted the economic, this economical euthanasia, and Ukraine today is a failed country, still kept alive thanks to the money the European taxpayers. How much are the damages of Russian and Italian uh, uh, sanctions? In 2013, we were the second largest exporter among EU countries toward the Federation, with 10.8 billion euros in export, an exchange of 40 billion and a growth rate of 8.5%. According to Italian National Institute of Statistics, in 2015, the value of the, our export to Russia fell down to 3.7 billion euros compared to 2013, just one year before the sanction. According to the study by the Vienna Institute for International Economics, Italy is one of the most affected countries by sanction. In 2015, we have lost 80,000 jobs and 0.1% of our gross domestic product due to the sanction. And it is estimated that at the end we could, lost, we could have lost 215,000 jobs in a few years. The, counter, the current sanction against Russia prevents Italy from exporting actually the half of our made in, that is famous worldwide. This measure only affects in the United States minimally as they increase the total volume of export uh, in the last year, but they are really destroying our uh, capacity of export, especially agri-food exportation. 300 uh, million is considered the amount of money we lost on that specific area. Actually, our government groups in the dark and it bets on big companies, forgetting that the 80% of our uh, companies are small and medium-sized. The First Star Movement has very clear ideas on that. Sanctions 
have to be cancelled immediately because they are inappropriate and unfair as a means of political pressure. They create serious economic distortions and damage Italian films. This is why we have fought the sanctions with dozens of parliamentarian proceedings and have been asking for two years to lift them in order to build a fruitful dialogue at both in economical and political level with Russia. Last April, we presented a proposal never considered by the government up to now in which we asked for a closer collaboration between the intelligence departments of the EU countries and those not belonging to the Union, Russia Federation, firstly, for the prevention and combating of the terroristic phenomenon. It is clear that to, uh, to have a so deep collaboration, we should start by lifting the sanction. The West could never be a real collaboration on that. We live in an incredible historical moment. NATO is advancing aggressively with the new bases in Eastern Europe, especially due to the media. We are facing a growing Russophobia to justify the entry of new state in EU and NATO. Montenegro, Georgia and Ukraine are just some examples. NATO is calling to increase the military expenses by 2% of our GDP, and we are talking about 100 million euros per day. In Italy we have 9 million poor and they are asking us to increase the NATO investment just to fight ideologically against Russia. That's my and our point of view. Once at the national government, we will revise the Italian membership to NATO, as indicated in a proposal of law coming from popular initiative already present in Parliament. To us, Russia is and must remain an essential commercial, economic, cultural and historical partner for the Italian and European future a key interlocutor for the res resolution on, of the serious international crisis in Iraq, Syria, Libya, and Yemen, a friendly country for the reconstruction of a new multipolar world through the principles of respect, sovereignty, self-determination of people, and a fair and balanced globalization model. If in St. Petersburg, Prime Minister Renzi spoke of bridges to be built and the stop of the automatic renewal sanction, just three days after, the EU ambassador renewed the embargo against Russia and he said <coughs> nothing. This intellectually old Italian political class embodied by Renzi does not have the freedom to respect what he says. It has no longer any credibility. The First Star Movement does. We have demonstrated it as opposition and we will demonstrate it as a governing force. As I said at the beginning of this speech, we will always act in the, interest, in the interest of the Italian people. That's why we haven't ever excluded and we will never do the cooperation with any international partner that could contribute to the well-being of our country. We feel we are friends with the BRICS country as well as the ALBA countries, uh, with the Arab League and also with the Atlantic ones. But friends, allies, does not mean in any way being subjects as we have been for the last 60 years. In this room today, there are the large part of the most influential parties all around the world, and it's time for a game changer. It's time to restart from new ideas, a young minds prepare and determine it. We are ready, and it's all a matter of time. Thank you.